Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to carefully, delicately, efficiently, clean your very dirty vintage stereo receiver. First thing you got to do is take it apart. So we've got our receiver apart now in three main categories. We've got the receiver chassis, we've got the controls, and we've got the top and bottom cover. And how could I forget the faceplate? Come with me on this grand adventure to watch this thing go from this to something actually acceptable. Let's go. She's heavy. Uh. Yeah, we're going to everybody's favorite place. Yeah, we're going to everybody's favorite place. You all know where we're going. It's everybody's favorite place. What's gonna happen? Why are we here? So like I said at the beginning of the video, everyone, we're gonna be very careful. Very delicate. Where'd that come from? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll clean this crap up. It is done. He ain't got no front wheels. Oh. Well everyone, these results may surprise you. They at least surprised me. So, it looks like we have here the world's first uh, white face pioneer. You know, you've seen the black face receivers that have like the black anodized aluminum. This looks like it's white because the dishwasher left some kind of weird uh, coating on it. Um, you can see right here where I've kind of rubbed it off with my fingers. And it's actually coming off right now with my finger, but it turns my thumb a funny color. So, 
I suppose I'll work on getting this off later. It looks like it's coming off fairly easily. But, you know, it's it's here. It's alive. It's not broken. Same thing happened with the knobs, so I suppose I'll have to find something that can get this white stuff off of the, uh, the knobs here. So I know what everyone's wondering, how's the receiver and does it work? Well, let's take a look at the receiver real quick here. You can see here that uh, it did pretty well. We're looking quite clean up front here. This was already pretty clean in the first place though. But let's go in here. You know, if you saw the video where I introduced this receiver, um, it was not looking good back here. And well, now it is. It's looking pretty clean. You can see that this board is actually green in color. Uh, the tuning cap looks pretty good. I know I sprayed that one pretty hard with the power washer. You can see under here where I missed a spot or two, but that's okay. I'll get that later. In the back though, kind of disappointing. Still pretty dirty back here, so this will take some actual elbow grease. I'm not going to waste any more time, folks. I'm going to turn this thing on, and I'm going to see if it still works as poorly as it did before I power washed it. Alright, I really haven't turned this on yet. I really don't know what's going to happen, so it might explode. It might not turn out at all. Might get a relay click, might not. We're about to find out, so we're on the dim bulb tester. I'm going to hit it, and let's see what happens. Good so far. That's a relay click. That means that it's not terrible. I do not see smoke of any kind right now. There are no shorts in it because that would show up very clearly on the dim bulb. So let's move to the back here. Let's check the speaker outputs for DC. Probably going to be fine because we got a relay click. So on the right channel. I think that's exactly what it was in the initial video. Watch that if you haven't already. And uh, on the left channel, a similar story. It's about what it was last time I turned this on. Let's get our speakers. Let's hook them up. Let's see if that AC hum is still there. It is. Definitely still have AC hum. So yeah, you all hear that. I will say this, off camera I looked underneath at the filter capacitors and one of them is a little bit leaky but I tested it before the power washing and it is uh, pretty far below what it's supposed to be. I think it was like 9,000 micro, it's supposed to be 15, so one of the filter capacitors is definitely bad and that's very likely the AC hum we're hearing, so anyways, let's see if the tuner works. Volume down, switch to FM, we have signal, volume up. Let's add a makeshift antenna, just to be sure. We've got the coffee for Patriots. Okay, so I wasn't getting much activity out of this when I had uh, no antenna connected, but I got my uh, professional antenna right here, and uh, we're bringing in stations. I'll tune to what I know to be 97.1 and uh, when I go to the middle it says exactly 97.1. I think if, if you all recall I had to do quite a bit of stuff to get sound out of these channels because these switches were so dirty. Um, it seems to be working a lot better now. It might just be me but I think that AC home is getting louder. So you know what this means folks, I've got the phone in my hand it's time for everyone's favorite song. Let's go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, it's kind of bad, but... I'm going to turn this off because I don't like that AC hum. I wasn't sure if this one was actually going to work because I was pretty hard with the power washer. I kind of held back a little bit with the 2230. This one I just showed absolutely no mercy. So you know, this isn't exactly something I'm promoting as an option for cleaning your receiver. This is for satire purposes. This is YouTube. This is all in good fun. Um, I don't recommend you do this because 
you know, something bad could happen, but unfortunately I can't provide any evidence that anything bad will happen because I've done it to two of them now and they both came out better than they were when I started. Obviously some things went very wrong like this white coloring or this residue on the faceplate. I'm not exactly sure I'm going to get this off yet but I'm sure it's not going to be too bad. And besides, you know, I'm not terribly hurt about it. This was in horrible condition in the first place. If anything, this looks better. And the second, for those of you who are concerned about the finish coming off of the top cover, I've got to roll this stuff right here. I bought this, actually, about ten years ago, and I still have it today. And I used this on my very first Pioneer SX750. This has an adhesive backing. You just cut a sheet and then use a razor blade and get it to uh, fit really nice on the case. Then just make sure there's no air bubbles and you've got yourself a really good looking case again. Because as, as you saw, it's not real wood on there. The uh, 850 and up had real wood, 750 and below did not. As is evident with uh, these faceplate things too. You see this stuff coming off. You can do whatever the heck you want with your receiver. I'm not saying that you have to do this. I'm not saying this is a good idea. This is just something I did for fun and people enjoy watching it. So, with that, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a kick out of this. Thank you so much for watching. And, obviously, next steps for this is repairs. So, if you want to see this thing get repaired, get some restoration work done to it, consider hitting that subscribe button, and uh, you won't be disappointed. Okay, thanks so much for watching again. I'll see you in the next one. Take care of